Hello ladies and gentlemen welcome back to exotic astrology and today we will discuss in short about the transit of venus in the zodiac sign of leo which will happen from 17th of august for the next 2025 days from that time and uh, this is quite an important transit because venus has been going through a lot of turmoil and crisis in the last few months just like sun and mercury to some extent and uh, now it is in a water sign which is also a pretty good sign for venus being cancer but very soon it will move into leo all right so let us try to discuss what happens when any planet transits leo and especially when venus transits leo what happens all right so what happens to everybody's individual charts will depend on the individual placements and the sign where venus is placed originally in your birth chart and where is sun placed in your birth chart because leo is ruled by the sun and which dashas you are running and where are the lords of the dashas placed and which antar dashas you are running and where are the lords placed okay in which dignity and which house that will ultimately give you the full flavor of the horoscope okay of this transit also so if you are interested to know more about yourself or any area of your life then you could always go down to the description section where you will find the link to my website to book a reading with me personally and if you are new then please subscribe to it and like this video if you like it at the end and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him <coughs> so now what is venus venus is our capacity to feel good <coughs> venus represents all the fine things venus represents clothes venus represents dining whining and dining <laughs> venus represents all the things that give us comfort venus represents all the things which even if we don't have it will not affect our life but if we have we feel that there is a value to life all right that's what venus represents and venus also represents the opposite sex for a man it represents the wife <coughs> and for women it can represent their sisters or their female friends or and at sometimes the elderly ladies also in the family all right so <coughs> now the thing is what what venus actually rules venus rules the second house which represents all the things related to food and drinks especially and perfumes and anything that is very soft yes if your if your uh, cushion is very soft that is venus anything which is very refined and venus rules the number 7 sign libra which is about relationships which is about partnerships which is about give and take basically okay which is about balance not that it is balanced but it has to balance itself so now when these uh, these significations go to the sign leo what happens well what is leo leo in one word is our ego okay now ego doesn't mean it is bad it can be good it can be bad depending on the whole horoscope okay so for example there can be personalities who always have had a healthy ego okay and there can be personalities who have always had a unhealthy ego okay ego is basically identification okay so there are two words used in sanskrit one is chit another is chitta sanskrit is very intricate so chit means the pure consciousness which means the pure unadulterated spiritual consciousness which we are all originally and chitta means the polluted consciousness which is the spirit when it gets entangled within matter which is our current situation all right so actually the sign leo represents chitta all right and jupiter represents chit in a very pure form <coughs> so what is chitta basically chitta means when we as spirit souls we forget god and we forget that our inherent nature is spiritual and we try to derive pleasure from materialistic substances that's what is chitta okay and that is what makes us experience limitations in this world that is why 
opposite of leo is the sign aquarius which is ruled by saturn that is why saturn is the significator of limitation so this means <coughs> whenever the chit becomes chitta there is saturn ahead all right so seventh house is directly the opposite <coughs> opposite means anything that is opposing you that's what is the seventh house all right <coughs> so when we become chitta <coughs> we always see that there are limitations which we face in this world in execution all right so that means <coughs> whenever a planet transits leo we can sometimes become aware of the limitations related to that planet which that planet rules in our chart okay <coughs> now why do we feel that because whenever <coughs> that planet will transit leo <coughs> we want to control the things that that planet signifies okay <coughs> which means suppose venus is your second lord then you will very aggressively want to control finances you will want to control your family control things related to your family <coughs> okay and then there is this law you know that the amount of frustration is directly proportional to the amount of expectation yes i repeat the amount of frustration is directly proportional to the amount of expectation so why do we want to control because it makes us feel good all right and when we talk of venus it it means the feel good factor is even more okay so when venus transits leo what can happen is we would want to control those things which makes us feel good in life about life in general anything in life which makes us feel good okay so that is what venus in leo can do so now it can be good or bad good in a way if we understand that see sometimes it is very good to take control of things okay so for example if your life is out of order if you are not doing what you are supposed to do then it is very good to take control okay and then you should take control of your life okay you should not let the mind keep wandering as shrimad bhagavatam says you know manorathe na sati dhavato bahi that the mind is wandering in the manoratha in the chariot yes we are we are wandering actually in the chariot of the mind na sati dhavato bahi bahi means many places all right it's a very famous shloka there so when our mind is roaming endlessly recklessly then it is very essential that we take control of the mind and bring it back as lord krishna says you know by two ways we can um uh, practice uh, we can practice spirituality by mind control using two ways okay so krishna says pract uh, practice and detachment abhyas and tyag these two things krishna says in the gita okay so if we practice detachment we if we practice bringing the mind back and we try to make ourselves detached which means we do not focus on the results we focus on putting our full efforts we focused on putting ourselves at the best okay so then we will realize that <coughs> controlling the mind is easy of course it's easier said than done but this is the way you have to start because this is what krishna says in the gita okay practice and detachment so now uh, when our life or certain area for life is out of order then it is very good to take control of it all right but suppose we want to take control of something just to show to that person or to that aspect of our life that yes 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 look i i am in control you know you must listen to me if you don't listen to me i will rip you apart all right so that if that is a part of our consciousness then we have to remember that opposite is saturn so then we face humiliation there okay then we face things which we do not want to face so when we come to leo we have to realize that although we are behaving like chitta but we are actually chit okay so Leo is the sign ruled by the sun which also shows enlightenment now that's a very peculiar sign that sign shows domination and that sign also shows enlightenment okay because ultimately it is the soul only which is getting entrapped and but it is ultimately the soul you see so now when the planet transits leo it is up to us that we can use our free will 
to behave at an enlightened level or to behave like somebody who is you know uh, pretending to control things because there is no controller in this world <laughs> there is only one controller who is that yes lord krishna says in the gita bhokta ram yagya tapasyam sarva loka maheshwaram suridam sarva bhutanam gyatva mam shantim rochati i am the enjoyer controller and proprietor of everything that exists suridam sarva bhutanam i am also the most well wishing friend of everybody gyatva mam shantim rochati one who knows this gyatva shantim rochati he obtains peace because then there's nothing to fight you see just do yourself just just do what uh, you can just be yourself and then whatever god gives accept that so when a planet transits leo it is the best time for us to behave in that way okay that's the way we can enhance the power of venus and enhance the power of leo and the sun in the highest way but if we behave as if no 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 i must control this you know i must control this person i must control that person i must control him i must control her well then that is a problem you see because nobody wants to be controlled everybody wants to be themselves okay so this time we need to check with ourselves are we trying to uh, lord over things okay because the question is why do we try to lord over things because there is a weakness inside us which we are trying to compensate by feeling good that we are having authority over someone okay so the sign leo can at time show weaknesses also okay so which means that when we have some deficiency inside we are trying to fulfill it from some external confirmation you see which means that uh i i tell myself no 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 you are a good person you can control this you can control that look that person listens to you look he listens she listens this this organization listens to you that person respects you okay so that can happen at times okay now why wh- how to get rid of that it's very simple we have to find fulfillment deep inside within ourselves at a spiritual level then we will not feel the need to control things externally okay that is a symptom of a disease which we can which we have that's what comes from chitta okay but when we are at a chit level we realize that no 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 these, these are uh, everybody has their own individual karma everybody we uh, will ultimately end up behaving the way they want to okay and ultimately what the plan that god has designed for them that's what is the ultimate plan that everybody has to abide by at the end not everybody needs to abide by what i say or what i think okay so that's the point which i am trying to make that when venus transits leo just check the houses which venus rules and accordingly we need to behave in a way that we do not try to fill some inner void which we have by you know externally gaining or externally controlling or externally uh uh trying to dominate over people and things okay because these things can be good or they can seem very lofty or very pleasurable in the beginning but as time goes we will realize that these people will not stay with us for very long time okay they will leave us eventually and we will be wondering and thinking what go- went wrong what did i do so bad that now this person is not with me okay so let us develop a healthy ego like yudhishthir maharaj like the great prithu maharaj in the shrimad bhagavatam like ambarish maharaj like so many characters we have in the shrimad bhagavatam yes we have in the ramayana like hanuman ji we have like jambavan we have extraordinary characters who have dedicated their lives like vibhishan then we also have shabri for example she is such a divine lady and we have sita devi's example we have so many examples you see we have the wife of bharat we have the wife of lakshman we have shatrugan's wife yes urmila then mandavi then shutakiti all these three divine ladies so these are the personalities who we should aspire to be like okay and on the other side we have examples of characters like duryodhana dushasan you know then we have ravan then we have so many other vicious characters who have degraded their lives and the lives of their own people also by trying to control things 
by trying to lord over things just because they wanted to fill a void within themselves okay so let us not be like them and let us be like the exemplary characters who have shaped the vedic context by their examples okay so that is where the shrimad bhagavatam focuses mahajano yena gata sapanta there are the 12 mahajans swambhu narada shambhu kumaro kapilo manu prahlado janako bhishmo balirvaya sakhi vayam that is the shloka which is there which Yamaraj is telling to his Yamadutas that these twelve are the great personalities. I mean, he's he himself is included in that. <laughs> great in the sense there are many Mahajans. Hanumanji is also a Mahajan, but these are the official twelve Mahajans, all right. So you can read about these twelve Mahajans, and you will find it in the Shrimad Bhagavatam if you search in Google. You know, twelve Mahajans, Shrimad Bhagavatam. So. uh please read about them and read their exemplary lives and their exemplary character and by that we will know how to behave how not to behave at times okay and how to act in a way that gives us fulfillment at a long run and also happiness to everybody else and not end up ruining somebody's life including ourselves all right so that is it from my side if you are new then please like comment share and subscribe click the thumbs up and uh, if you want a consultation from me regarding this transit then you could always go down to the description section where you will find the link to my website okay god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him all the best